my peace, light, and love. I'm having my sviach kuvit, which is cauliflower sviach. Look, it has eggplants, and hummus. Mm. Mm, absolutely delicious. Mm, it's beautiful here. Very peaceful. I really recommend this. I just learned the word in French is chauffeur. Chauffeur. So. I just wonder why not more people stand in line for this vegan sabiach. Sabiach in Hebrew is a sort of, um, it's a, a dish that has usually eggplant, fried eggplant. And this is something that's really, I find it difficult to do at home because I can never get the eggplant at the right temperature. Maybe I have to practice more. It's hard to fry the eggplant. So what are life lessons to do? Mm. One, never put a dog on a table. It it confuses dogs, you see? You see them putting the dog on the table? I'm not gonna say anything to them though. Do you see it? They place the dog on a picnic table. First of all, it's not nice for the people. Second of all, it's um, very bad for the dog because the dog needs to know that he's underneath. Watch me try to give them advice, which is my nature. Slicha. <laughs> no. יש לי פשוט הערה בתור בעלת כלבים. אתם, את יודע, הכלבים, נורא חשוב להם היררכיה. וברגע שתשים אותם למעלה, זה מבלבל אותם. אתם יודעים, שמעתם את זה? נגיד, עכשיו, נגיד אני רוצה לאכול. אם אני אוכל איתם באותו רמה, הם יהיו תוקפנים, באמת. כי הם צריכים לדעת שהם למטה ואת למעלה. לא, תדעי לך, אחרת יהיה לך בעיות התנהגויות, פשוט. Okay, so I gave her advice and she actually listened to it, which is, if you say it in a nice way, you get results, because it is true. Animal dogs need to know that there's an hierarchy, and if you put them up, they become dominant and aggressive. This one too, right? I'm not giving him them people's food, which is something I'm learning as well. Not to give dogs people's food, because uh, you're not doing them a favor. Our food has salt and um, uh, chemicals that are not good for, for, for dogs. So this is life lessons for me today. And I think I'm going to combine it with a reading. So I have this book. It's called A Brief Lunacy. So this, this is lunchtime reading. I'm going to do this more often. This is a book by Cynthia Thayer. And I'm going to read from it. Yesterday I felt from bus because I was so in this I was so into this book I wouldn't call it a thriller because for me a thriller is usually um, not very high level reading because um, it's the writing is not that good and this is very well written the language is good it flows it takes place in New England which is a place I used to live in in Maine so our characters are Jesse and Carl. Jesse and Carl are a married couple. She's a retired history teacher. She's a retired um, orthopedic surgeon. And they have three children, Charlie, Sam, and Sylvie. Sylvie's the eldest. And their daughter started to have problems uh, around graduation from high school. Um, she had like episodes of mental illness. So I, I've always found it important to read and talk about mental illness or mental health. And this is how they're dealing with it and how difficult it is. And so we find them in their home in Maine. And there's a very quiet, what I like is there's a quiet setting. Uh, I'll describe it. Uh, I mean, I'll read from the beginning and I'll skip. So we have, what I like is they have different voices. So now we're, 
it's from the point of view of Jessie, the woman, who's a history teacher, a retired history teacher. Two young gulls prance on the boulder outside my kitchen window, tossing a dead fish back and forth. The others stand one-legged, facing the spot on the far shore where the sun will emerge. Sometimes I imagine that it won't rise at all and the light will remain dim throughout the whole day. Tranquil October mornings are my best time for thought. Between the telephone rings, before the telephone rings or call fills the cattle with water, I sit at the painted yellow table without tea, without the clatter of breakfast dishes, without a living soul to speak to. Sometimes I write in a handmade book filled with pale green paper given to me by Sylvie last Christmas. I keep this sweet card she sent tucked in towards the back of the book. But I'm tired. I don't write anything. The book lies flat open on the plus placemat. Today I just sit and look at my hands. When I touch the skin on the back of my hand between the long bones, the spot feels puffy, the skin brittle. If I saw those hands in a magazine photograph, I would say they were the hands of an old woman, and I'd be right. It surprises me, that's all. Call, I know he's awake, so I don't raise my voice. Just call loudly enough to let him know I'm starting the omelet. The first egg yolk breaks when I crack its shell against the bowl rim. The, the, the bowl rim. The next two are perfect. I shake a little extra pepper and dry thyme into the bowl before I beat the eggs. He comes clattering up behind me with the tea kettle. I keep grating the cheese. He runs too much water into the kettle every morning and it takes forever to boil. After he lights the gas, he stands behind me and presses his mouth to the back of my neck and hums every day. Good morning, my pet, he says. Paul, why do the gulls face the rising sun? Because they know it's going to be a day full of fish. Tomato in your omelet? Not today. I've got a canker from all the tomatoes. How about some of the smoked salmon from last night? That's what I love about him. He doesn't say, sure, tomato would be fine. Shh. And he gets the smoked salmon himself from the refrigerator, unwraps it and places it on the cutting board in front of me. I slice it into tiny pieces while the omelet sizzles in the frying pan and the tea kettle hums in the boiling. We're a team, Carl and I. So they're, so they're discussing what to do. They are a team. So we're, we have this atmosphere. And Sylvie is their daughter and she's in a mental institution, but it's sort of uh, open. And um, she describes uh, what happens last time. Last Thanksgiving was a nightmare. The children were all here. Sam, Charlie and his wife, my brother Harry and his wife, Sylvie. It took both Carl and Charlie to hold her, to keep her from burning the place down. I set the table with plates and cloth napkins and my mother's china teacups. Let's paint in the woods. Just take the easel down the path and paint some of the mushrooms before they rot. There's a fox skull down by the old pine. I'd like to do something with that. So, it's a very easy... Uh, the atmosphere in this book is um, described in detail and, and you can really live this book and also the characters. I do think my criticism is that when you describe mental illness, burning down the house is sort of extreme. And um, I think uh, that's my criticism. So a stranger comes into their life, a man knocks on the door, he says his Camping equipment has been stolen, and um, his, all his money has been stolen. Carl offers to drive him, but then he ends up spending the night. And it's a very interesting atmosphere. He says he can't fall asleep without movies. And so, just he's lying in bed and listening to him change the videos, the movies, various movies that are also interesting for me. And it's sort of a hint, Thelma and Louise, uh, Sophie's Choice, it's all connected to the themes of the Holocaust because apparently Carl was in, in the war and things unfold 
He was doing World War II in the war, and this is dedicated to Roma. So apparently, it's a population that people don't speak about, the Roma, the gypsies, who were uh, murdered during the Holocaust in concentration camps as well. So, into this atmosphere of peace, quiet and loving, uh, a nest of peace enters a stranger. And um, this young man, uh, who claims to be a bird expert, and they try to test him. So the mystery unfolds. So, peace, line and love, and I shall continue the reading next time. So, as I said, it's called A Brief Lunacy, a novel by Cynthia Thayer. Really recommend it. Um, really takes you to an atmosphere, and I think she's very talented in describing the details of uh, a life of people and different points of view. So there's never like a moment where you're not thinking what's going to happen next, which is the definition of a thriller, I suppose. And though I have some idea that some violence is going to happen, so it's interesting to know what's going to happen. A stranger walks in your life and upsets the peace. Just the way I think mentally ill people, they upset the order of society. Society seems to be thriving on peaceful coexistence between people and then the mentally ill patients come and they shake it all around because they they make us question question a lot of things and they disturb the peace that is in society. Anyway, peace, light and love from this beautiful place here by the river. And another last tidbit. Once read that there used to be this mental health tip that if a person wasn't feeling good mentally, they would take him to a river and watch the river flow. And that gives you a sense of uh, tranquility, as well as reminds us to always let go because we can't step in the river twice. Peace, land, love.